Welcome, everybody. This is For the Love of Money, where we are making you unapologetic about your pursuit of success by sharing the tools, tips, and stories of those who have already made it. My name is Chris Harder, and each week I will bring you incredible guests in order to prove that when good people make good money, they do great things. Welcome back, everybody, to another amazing episode of For the Love of Money. And this episode is a really special one to me because I get to sit down with one of my good, good friends, Lewis Howes, and talk about masculinity. You know, Lewis is an expert in not only masculinity, but the masks of masculinity that we all tend to wear in order to compensate for things that we perceive as weaknesses in our life. Now, this doesn't just have to do with your life. It has to do with your business as well because we wear these masks in business. And so we sit down, we talk about what the different masks are, why we start to wear them to begin with, what we can do to remove them. And Lewis offers up some really good personal stories of times that his masks have gotten in a way from what he really, really wanted. So if you're a guy, this is a really special episode for you because it's going to give you breakthroughs that will bring everything that you're working towards to you that much faster, that much better. And if you're a woman, this episode is totally for you because even though we're talking about masculinity, this is like peeking behind the curtains of us men to find out what's really going on inside our heads and and why we act the way that we act. And so this is probably one of the most interesting episodes that we have done to date, and I can't wait to get your feedback. So sit down, listen up, get ready, because this episode is epic. All right, my man, Lewis, I am so excited to be able to sit down and talk with you about your new book, The Mask of Masculinity. How you doing, man? Doing good, man. Thanks for having me here. Yeah, my pleasure. So here's why I'm so excited. As I read this book, and by the way, I I devoured it. I mean, I got through it in two days, which is fast for me. But as I read this book, I had as much enlightenment and like breakthroughs as I had moments where I was almost pushing back and questioning some of the things in there. Mm -hmm. And so it'll be interesting as this interview plays out, um, me kind of exposing to you where I pushed back and where I had breakthroughs. But before we even get into that, tell us why this book and why now? You know, for me, I just felt like if I was going to do something after my last book, it had to be more meaningful and impactful to the world. Not that my last book wasn't, but I felt like that was kind of the foundation. And I said, well, what's the thing that I'm struggling with the most? And what's the thing that I think the world is struggling with the most that I could speak into and be interested about? And really the, uh, you know, the path of healing and the path of uh, letting go of our ego was something that I was constantly needing to work with because mine kept coming up uh, years ago. And I realized that every time my ego got in the way, I felt like it held me back from my vision. It made me feel focused on negative things as opposed to focused on the future of what I wanted to create in the world. And so I wanted to dive into deeper of how to let that go for myself and help other men heal. And that's why I started. So was this kind of a healing process for yourself to write it as much as it is for all of us men out there? Yeah. I mean, I was... I would say I was opening up about stuff that I was insecure about and afraid of other people knowing for a couple years before I started writing this, but it just helped to continue to deepen the practice of letting go and surrendering because I think as guys and all humans, we've been conditioned to act a certain way our entire lives. And so even if we have an awakening or a breakthrough or an awareness around it, it's going to take time to shift it completely so that those triggers don't trigger us anymore. So even though it's been a, you know four years now that I've been working on myself, we were just talking about this before. I just got angry as like a text rage yesterday with a guy because I allowed it to trigger me. And uh, you know before I probably would have done a lot worse than what I did. I probably would have called the guy, been swearing, and gone over there and threatened him with something, and who knows? I wanted to fight him. So at least I was able to, you know, only do minimal damage and 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 pause and take a break and go work out and breathe and. And assess the situation as opposed to what I used to do, which is just if someone hurts me, I'm going to attack. And uh, yeah, so. Yeah, it's funny. I was telling you downstairs and I actually shared with social media a couple of weeks ago. 
I had the same kind of breakthrough, same kind of moment where somebody cut me off and, and my normal reaction, I'm almost ashamed to say up to this point was, you know, flipping them off and saying F you and all this. And I had that rage come up in me like always, except I had just finished reading the book and it gave me this moment of pause yeah. where I realized it was a, probably a couple of masks, right? My, like my alpha mask and aggressive my aggressive, aggressive mask, mask yeah. that... Yeah. I kind of fall back on to define who I am or to protect myself. And mm-hmm. so I was able to kind of breathe and get through it without my typical give them the bird F you moment. Yeah. And who knows what that saved me from in that situation. I mean, I literally, there was a time in my car one time when I was driving and I made a right turn and I didn't see that there was a runner coming. And so he ran and kind of like had to stop and go around me. Right. And he hit the back of my car as he was running by to, you know, cause he was upset or whatever. I literally drove and chased this guy for blocks, got out of my car and started running after this guy. That's how defensive I used to be. This was like three, four years ago. That's how like far I would take it. You know, if someone's going to do something to me, like I would go until I proved them wrong or till I made myself feel good. And it doesn't do any good. I could have done something. Now he ran off and kept running around because he didn't want to address me. Uh, I kept pulling up to him and getting out, and he would just keep sprinting off. And it's probably a good thing because I wasn't going to back down to this guy at the time. I would have probably fought him mm-hmm. and been like, you touched my car. Here's what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. And uh, it just doesn't support our vision. If we want to be ultimate, not even men, but human beings, we should be committed to our vision, not committed to our egos, which hold us back and hurt us in relationships, in our careers, our businesses, our health. It all affects us in a negative way. And the more residual we hold on to that aggression, it affects us that whole day. It might affect us the whole week where we just focus on that one thing as opposed to connecting to the people in our lives, our family, working on the challenges that will move us forward as opposed to hold us back. So that's why I think this book for me is really important. And not even just the, the message, the topic, just having these conversations is important because I think a lot of men have been conditioned to respond and react with anger and frustration because we don't know how to communicate or breathe into moments of stress as well as we could, I think. And I think this is a human being problem, not just men, but I feel like there's so many moments, especially in traffic or, or times when we're stuck in our life, when things we feel attacked. Reacting is never as good as like responding from a place of grace. So just focus on responding with grace as opposed to reacting in a negative way. Man, there's a powerful quote right there. So you know, here we are just a couple of guys kind of having a, a, a guy conversation about the masks that we've worn up to this point. What about the women? Do women wear these masks as well? Absolutely. I think, uh, and they may have some different masks, but I think women have just their own set of challenges, their own set of problems, their own set of issues right now. You know, they need to be, um, they need to have kids. They need to be able to take care and be the best mom. They need to be career driven also and be great at work. And they need to be sexy at home when they come back, always be on for, for everyone. They have this sense of needing to be perfect a lot. And uh, the, cha- the, the, the thing that most women tend to do differently than guys is they communicate their fears and insecurities with each other. They form groups. They talk daily, weekly. They go, they go out together and they talk about these things. 50% of men don't feel like they have a guy friend they can share and express their insecurities, their fears, their worries, their concerns to. And so that just is a challenge for men with a different set of masks that they put on to protect themselves and to feel like they're okay and to feel that acceptance themselves when they feel like they can't share verbally. So that's the difference. So there's nine different masks. Which one did yeah. you tend to wear the most? <clears throat> the athlete mask the alpha mask and the aggressive mask for sure. And the sexual mask, uh, different stages in my life. Uh, but I've worn all of them and continue to wear them from time to time, but I'm just so much more aware of them when I have them on. So, but for me, it started with, um, the athlete mask because I was picked on, I was bullied. I was picked last in sports teams when I was in uh, elementary school. And I remember I was picked last one time in a dodgeball game. Uh, there was two pickers, two captains of this team, and it was for our class in fourth grade. And uh, two boys were the captains. And they went on to pick each one of the boys on, in our class. And I was thinking that I was going to be one of the first picked because I was one of the tallest. And they ended up coming down to the final two boys. And I'm like, oh, I hope I'm not the last boy picked. And then they picked the other boy. So I'm like, dang it, I'm the last guy picked. And then they pick a girl. And then they pick another girl. 
and they pick all the girls. And then I'm the last person picked. And so for me, I felt like, wow, I'm less than a girl, right? I'm like, not even good enough to be picked with the guys. I'm less than. And I remember being so angry in that moment. I like destroyed everyone in this dodgeball game. I was just like slamming it in people's faces. I was like, I'm going to prove you guys wrong. And in that moment, I was like, I'm going to become so big, fast, and strong that I'm never picked last again. That I'm always going to be one of the first picked. So valuable to people that they have to pick me. They see my value in my athletic ability. And the crazy thing is that worked. It worked. I started training nonstop to be a, a better athlete, and I got picked first. I got I was the MVP. I was the most valuable person on these teams. And a couple challenges that happened. It was never enough. I was the worst loser in high school and college and pro. Whenever we would lose, I would get so mad and just rage because I put my self-worth based on being the best and winning. So if we lost, it was like I was picked last again and I was a loser. Even worse, when I got injured and I could no longer be an athlete, my whole identity was stripped of, well, this is where I got my self-worth from being a good athlete. So if I'm no longer a good athlete, then who am I? And I had to reinvent myself and figure out, oh, what am I even good at? You know, what are my qualities to provide to the world? But when we wrap ourselves around these masks, for example, the material mask, a lot of guys, uh, you know, fixate on just making money and they fixate on having and showing off constantly their watches, their cars, or they make their life around money and things. And I'm all for having luxurious things and flying, you know, private and all these other things. I'm all for it. But if I wrap my identity around how much money I have in my bank account, then when my bank account goes down or I lose it all, then I lose my identity. I lose my self-worth because it's all wrapped around money or these material things. And that's where we have a crisis with men. Um, is when we wrap our identity around our masks as opposed to share our heart openly with other people so they can fully see who we are. And a lot of us do these things to fit in because we want to be accepted by our peers or other teammates or family or whatever it is. We want to fit in. So we wear things, these masks to show we're worthy of their acceptance as opposed to just saying, well, this is who I am and I'm going to find my tribe who accepts me. It's hard though. It's hard to fully open up and be yourself and let people see you, and that's why we do this. So tell us about a time that one of these masks actually really cost you something. And, and further, I, ch I challenge you, if you can think of a time that you haven't shared with somebody yet that wearing one of these masks has really caught you, cost you something. Oh, man. I feel like luckily I haven't like gone to jail or anything like that. So I'm very grateful <laughs> that my masks haven't caught up to me that much because I haven't done anything stupid enough to do that. But I think just getting in a couple of fights that I got in is what I can think of. Allowing myself to get so reactive to fight people, to physically hit other people, guys. Um, and just not have the emotional, I didn't have the emotional capacity to be graceful in those moments. And it could have cost me a lot. I think it was four, four and a half years ago when I got in a really bad fight on the basketball court in West Hollywood. And it could have cost me a lot. I mean, the police station was right across the street. I could have gone to jail. Something could have happened. You know, it could have been a whole thing online about me, like going to jail, like my business would have suffered. And I would have had this thing on my, you know, record for the rest of my life for being a weak human being that had to react as opposed to being able to rise above it. And um, so luckily I haven't done anything stupid and I hope I never do that would put me in that situation. But in the past I've been quick to be aggressive and feel like I need to protect myself even when it doesn't matter. Even when it's not like someone with a gun or a knife, but just someone saying something, I would always have to defend myself and uh, it just would hold me back from everything. You know, it hurt relationships, intimate relationships, you know, girlfriends that I was with in the past would always affect it. So I can't think of something specific right now, but I, if I do, I'll come back to it. So you mentioned it could have shown up in your business. Mm -hmm. How have these masks shown up in your business in the past? Oh, my gosh. 
I almost got in a fight in the middle of Times Square with my old business partner. Come on. Like, literally, we were almost in a fist fight. <clears throat> my friend, you know James Wedmore? Yeah. He was actually there watching this. And we were screaming in the middle of Times Square right by the stairs. There was like a big stair stairwell. In the middle of the street, screaming at each other. And I was about to like throw and just start wailing on him because I couldn't communicate. I didn't have the emotional capacity to just mediate the conversation out of, with grace. And it was like, it wasn't my way. And I felt so attacked and so like he was taking money from me, this, like things weren't doing the things that I, uh, that I felt like were the right way. And I just wanted to beat him up. I mean, I was just like, I didn't know any other way to express myself. I didn't have the emotional tools. This has somebody in 2011, 2012. <clears throat> it was bad, man. Luckily, my friend, other friend was there. James was there and, he, there, and he kind of broke it up. And he was like, okay, guys, like, let's figure this out another place, another time or whatever. But it was bad, man. And um, yeah, I don't know if many people know that. I just think, like, we, you know, I wasn't equipped. And when a trigger, when a mask is on so tight, you believe it's, you're, you're true and you're right and nothing else matters because you have to protect yourself. But I could have, again, something really bad could have happened there. Luckily, someone was there to stop it. It's amazing because the, I'm starting to learn that these masks become our default. And breaking out of your default has got to be one of the hardest things to do. Am I right? So hard, man. Yeah. It's our like, it's just what we're so used to doing, you know, from childhood. So that's why we need to be first aware of these things and be able to have these conversations and address, well, why am I this way? Why do I get so reactive? And go back to the root of it. You know, find the cause or cause is. You know, for me, I always tell men, start with a list. Start writing down all the people in your life that ever hurt you or said something that you remember that you still haven't fully forgiven or you're affected by. Like, write down all those instances just so you can look at them and be aware and see what are the common themes. What do these people say? What do they do? What do they not do? Maybe they didn't say something that hurt you. Just you have it all down so you can look at it and be aware of those moments in your life that, you know, you remember and you still hold on to. Why? Why are you holding on to it? Why haven't you forgiven those people, those situations? Or why haven't you forgiven yourself for something you've done? All the moments you're ashamed of, you're guilty of, you're insecure of, write them down. And then the next step I would say is to have a conversation with someone you trust and say, hey, I would love to just share with you some of these things that I've been through and not have you respond, not have you judge me, but just I want to be able to have a conversation about it knowing you're going to still accept me for who I am. And maybe you can't do that with a family member or a friend or a partner. Maybe you need to hire a therapist or a coach or someone who is in a neutral space with you and just talk about these things so you can express them and start feeling more relaxed about it as opposed to constantly being embarrassed or holding on to this frustration, anger, guilt, shame that we surround ourselves with. And that's one of the reasons why we wear these masks is because we're ashamed, we're guilty, we're insecure, we're afraid, and we try to protect ourselves. So clearly, as I read this, I had breakthroughs. And clearly, as I read this, I started to recognize a lot of my own masks. Um, but as I told you earlier, I also had these moments that boiled up of like pushback. Let's hear it. Right? What is and it? so playing devil's advocate for a moment, um, what if a guy's like, hey, I like this mask. Like, I like mm. being competitive. Yes. I like being tough. People can count on me. I like being success-driven. This is what makes me, me. Yeah. I think, great. Keep using the things that work for you and ask yourself, are you fully fulfilled inside? Do you have inner peace? Are there moments where you're still angry and you hold on to things and resent things from the past? Uh, are there things you do that hurt other people by wearing that mask? If, if you don't hurt other people intentionally, and you're not like being a bully or needing to be right all the time or needing to win all the time. And you are able to sleep uh, calmly and peacefully at night. And you're not fully feeling like the weight of the world on your shoulders. Then cool. Keep doing what you're doing. Uh, I'm super competitive. I don't think that's a mask. I think that's just a way of being. I like to, I like to win. I like to be competitive. But there's a difference between being competitive and giving your best and winning and also being competitive, giving your best, and losing, if you're a sore loser, how does that help you? Or if you're 
Um, you know, you get frustrated constantly at yourself. How does that help you? So be competitive, be aggressive, be tough, but also create win-win experiences. You know, even if you lose, where's the lesson and how can you be a good sport? You know, even if you win, how can you be a, a, a great champion and, and lift others up and not put people down? So finding the way to be who you want to be and, and embracing it fully, but also making sure that you have peace in your heart. I think that's important. That makes sense. And it, the struggle is that it seems like it's okay to wear these masks sometimes, but we have to be able to recognize when it's hurting us exactly. or when we need to take them off. For example, when I was broke on my sister's couch, I was sick and tired of being broke. So I said, I'm going to put the material mask on. I'm going to focus on making money. I'm going to meet with all the millionaires. I'm going to focus on, you know, the numbers. I want nice things. I want to buy these things. So it's going to make me feel like I made it. And so I did for a few years. I focused on the money and it worked. I made millions of dollars. I had a lot of money in my bank account. I was able to do whatever I wanted. And I also gained 60 pounds. People call me Fluis for Fat Lewis. <laughs> I, I didn't know that. Yeah, they call me Fluis. I've got some photos of me that look like the marshmallow man because I was so fat at one point. And I wasn't sleeping because all I did was like, I got to make money. I got to make money. I got to make money. And so I'd stay up till 4 a.m. every single night working just to like, what's the next relationship I can build? What's the next like affiliate? What's this? You know, webinar, whatever. I was just working, grinding. And there was no real intimate relationships happening because it was all fixated on making money. So, yeah, it works. These masks work for us. You know, when you put the material mask on because you're a guy that wants to get a girlfriend and you're like, well, maybe when I have the nice car and I get the watch and I have some money, I can go out to the club and, and pay for things, I'll attract the girl. Yeah, it's going to work. You're going to get people to come to you. But are they coming to you for the right reasons, for that intention, or are they coming to you because they love who you're being? They love your energy. They love your thoughtfulness, your compassion, your generosity. Or if the money's gone, do they leave as well? So I think you get to just see how does this work for my life, my health, my well-being, and my relationships? And how can I be driven to achieve what I want, but also make sure that I'm living in harmony with this as well? This is very much, you brought up the topic, a podcast about um, money mindset mm -hmm. and about business. And it really has the end goal of helping people be unapologetic about being successful yes. and having a healthy relationship with how they view money and success. You know, heck, my tagline is when good people make good money, they do great things. Yes. So this idea of the materials mask, uh -huh. it might, in a way, contradict this entire goal of this podcast. So how <laughs> do we know if we have a healthy desire well, for money yeah. or if it's making up for something? Well, I think it's, yeah, again, the mask is the material mass to make all the money in the world for you and to show off how successful you are and to, cause you build your self worth around your material things. So if that's how you're living your life, then I feel like you might be out of balance. And when you make all the money in the world, I'm all for making as much money as you want and having all the nice things you want and using it as a tool to educate and inspire others. Not so everyone look at me and love me because this is how I develop my self-worth. So I think it's just like a, a minor tweak in like the approach. And when we make money to do good, the way you're talking about in the podcast, then it allows you to make more money and do more good. And it feels fulfilling. If you were just making money, like I love your house and your cars, like I'm inspired by it. It's cool. But if it was just to show off that, Hey guys, look at me, I've made it. So accept me and love me and say nice things about me, it would feel very unfulfilling after a while. Cause you'd be like, what am I doing? This is all for me focused on me, 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 as opposed to we, how can we continue to give back from the lessons we've learned? How can we continue to use our money for good? The way you're talking about on the podcast. And I think that's the ultimate fulfillment when we continue to grow and when we contribute to others. But if it's only for our needs, then the ego is the only thing that's being fueled as opposed to the soul and the heart. And that's where I think your podcast is so important to be talking about because people don't talk about money. People don't talk about it because they're afraid or they're insecure or they feel like it's bad or it's wrong. And I know you talk about all these things. And that's why I think people need to have conversations about money on a consistent basis. At least weekly, they should be talking about money. 
How am I going to earn more? How am I going to bring in more? What am I going to do with the money when I have it that's not only for me and my family, but for this world that is providing for me? Because I believe we have a resp- responsibility. The world, we would not be able to survive without this playground that we grew up in. We take it for granted. So how can we give back to the people in the community that have supported us, the humanity, the world, things like that? And that's why I think you do such an incredible job with that because you talk about it, you create a safe space for people to talk about it, and you're leading the example. You're saying, hey, look, guys, I've got nice things, but you're not flashing it every single day to try to get likes. You're living your lifestyle and inspiring other people to do the same thing. When we do good, we work hard, get nice things that you want, but also give back. It inspires other people to do the same thing. And it's not just how many more cars can I have just for me, but how can I live the great life and give back? And that's what this is about. It's funny. You can probably almost watch me working through this as we have this conversation, right? Because I, I think that's what people need to do with this book is they're yes. not going to read it and, and then they're done with it. They're going to continue yeah. to work through it. Yeah. And you said something that felt like a bit of an epiphany and you use the term self-worth. Mm-hmm. So any of these masks, let's stick on the material one because of the podcast, but yes. any of these masks... If you're deriving your self-worth from a mask, a mask by definition is, is fake, right? Yes. It's, it's something that's temporary. And so, therefore, your self-worth is going to be very temporary as well, Based isn't on it? that. Yeah. And based on the, you know, again, if, you're, if your self-worth is based around how much net worth you have, it's going to be temporary because your money's going to go up and down. Or you're going to always be scared to lose it because you'd be like, oh, if I drop in my bank account, then I'm not going to have as much self-worth. Same thing with the athlete mask. If you're not doing as well in sports and you're not getting the praise that you once had or you got injured, now your self-worth is based around something you don't have anymore because you can't use your athletic abilities. Same thing with the know-it-all mask. You know, a lot of guys or some guys with the know-it-all mask constantly lead with their intelligence and they're always needing to be right and they have all the answers or they have the degrees which make them smarter and they lead with that as their self-worth. You know, same thing with the alpha mask, the guy that always seems like he can puff his chest out in any situation. If he feels like he can't do that anymore, then he doesn't know who he is. So we just can't live. We can't have self-worth wrapped around these masks. They don't support us. They don't serve us. And they affect us majorly when something is uh, attacking those masks. When someone attacks our mask, where we have our self-worth wrapped around, then we feel like they're attacking us. Because the mask is on us. But if we remove the mask and someone attacks us, our, our, self, our, our mask, we don't have our self-worth wrapped around this thing that used to be on us. And so it doesn't affect us. We don't give it power. I think Martin Luther King said something. I'm going to butcher the quote. But he said, I don't get angry at people who say racist things to me because he's not giving them that power. He's... It's not true to him what they're saying. And he doesn't wrap his self-worth around what they're saying. So there it doesn't affect him. And he has the power over what they say, not them controlling his mind. I think that's where we get to lead into as human beings and as men. It's not allowing our default uh, triggers to con- consume and control us. You know, Like you said, you don't want to flip someone off who's driving. That's like a default false sense of who you are. You know, it's like your mask, your alpha and aggressive mask. If it's on, then you're going to get triggered. But if you have it off and you're breathing and you're mindful that you're not wearing that mask, then you're not going to get upset. You should be like, well, okay, maybe he's had a bad day. And I'm good thing I'm aware and I'm looking around me and I see my surroundings. So, and I know this is going to happen every day. It's really freeing. Uh, yeah. Like the whole idea of if you take that mask off mm-hmm. now, you're free of that reaction. You're free yes. of that. Let's almost call it a weakness where mm-hmm. it would have triggered you in the past. Let's use that as a segue into, do you ever find yourself purposely trying to avoid masks? And here's what I mean. At this point, you're a wealthy man. Uh-huh. And when you were poor, you stated clearly in the book that you would fantasize about being rich, right? Yeah, of course. And now that you are, matter of fact, we went out, we were looking at it earlier today. <laughs> You choose to drive this 1991 Cadillac yep. that yep. you bought for four grand several yep. years ago. Yep. You could have any car in the world you wanted right now. Yep. Do you do this because you're simply and authentically just not interested in material things? Or 
do you think you are fighting the temptation of even <laughs> beginning to wear this materials mask? Um, that's a good question. I think I've, one, I just think I've never cared about cars. Like that's just not my like desire. When I'm in a nice car, I'm like, wow, this is really cool. But then I think about, okay, could I use this money for something else that I care about more? You know, you love cars, so it makes sense that you're like, it, you know, gives you energy, excitement. Like, I like driving an Uber where I don't have to drive. You know, it's like, I like being able to work and just relax. I like that luxury more. I'd rather invest in that. I'd rather invest in first class. I'd rather, you know, the idea of having a private jet, that actually excites me. Yeah. You know, or just having access to one mm -hmm. that I can fly. Like, that is something like the freedom of time, the freedom of hassle like i like that luxury so i want to invest in those things you know having a personal assistant is like a, a sports car for me you know it's like i have all this free time and it's a great luxury for me to have someone cook and clean and do my laundry and do these things that i choose not to do and so and i also look at i don't know but we were just talking about you know maybe i'm gonna get a nice new car soon it's just like if this thing keeps breaking down every six months, it's like, all right, I should probably have something reliable and that's like <laughs> up to speed now. So, um, but I also am aware it's like, okay, do I post certain things where people are going to criticize me if like I have something nice or whatever? I'm sure it's going to happen either way because they're like, oh, or now, now I'm always going to be aware like, oh, you're wearing the material mask. You're yep. wearing the sexual mask. Oh, you got a, two girls around your arm or you're wearing the sexual mask. Yep. You know, I'm sure it's going to happen constantly towards me. Um, but I think as long as I know that I'm trying to do the best that I can, that's all that matters. So, yeah. So sticking with the theme of, of business and money, mm -hmm. obviously stripping ourselves and not even stripping ourselves, becoming aware of these masks, um, can have a payoff. So define for us to your level of comfort, <clears throat> your level of, uh, your level of success in business and finances, both prior to. And then after discovering and working on the removal of some of these mm -hmm. masks. Yeah. I mean, my business has thrived financially, but I've also not as fast as it could have because I'm mindful of the actions I'm taking in business. Whereas I used to be so focused on like, let's make the money that I started shifting this a few years ago to, I'm only going to make the money if I feel good and excited about it. And it's making an impact. So pretty much, I think 95% of the things I do fit in that category. Some things I do because the paycheck's so good that I'm like, okay, I need to figure out a way to make impact around this. But um, I'd say no to a lot of money-making opportunities. So my business could be a lot bigger, but I have such more of a balanced life that I'm not called fluous anymore because I take care of my health during the day, that I'm not stressed out. I go to bed at a, a, a great time and get enough sleep. Like... I'm mindful of a holistic lifestyle that I want to live. And um, so it's just allowed me to be more mindful of my life in general and have inner peace around everything I do and not stress about the money and not stress about this or stress about that. But just be at peace with things because my inner peace is more important than having lots of money if I'm causing cancer in my body. You know, Steve Jobs would have given all of his money back to have another... Mm -hmm month year day probably of his life and he talks about how he wishes he wasn't so like stressed out and so putting so much pressure on himself and constantly aggressive and things like that because he caused the cancer the disease he caused it himself from the stress the anxiety it's like what's it worth if you die at 50 you know all the money in the world that mask the aggressive the alpha the material mask the know-it-all mask put all the masks on and maybe you're like this iconic legend that dies at 50. And is that worth it? You know, there's prices we pay for wearing masks. There's rewards as well. You know, you wear the sexual mask and you're to sleep with a thousand women. Pfft, sounds pretty cool, right? But what's the price you pay? Constantly chasing anxiety, constantly managing a million relationships causing harm on people, never opening up, never knowing what intimacy feels like, never feeling like it's enough. Like there's a price we pay as well um, with these masks. There's rewards and prices. You just got to figure out what's the life you want to live. You know, there's no right or wrong, good or bad here. It's like, 
are you living a life that you want to live when you wear the mask? Are you doing the best you can as a man or a human being? And if not, then let's just be aware of it and let's tweak it a little bit. You know, make millions of dollars, but maybe you don't need 10 cars, maybe you just need five and you can do something else with that extra half a million to give back or to help others and see how that feels. Try different things. I'm not telling people to stop being who they are. I'm saying step into who they fully are by embracing a holistic lifestyle. You just mentioned giving back, something that we're huge fans of here in the podcast. And I actually have a question I ask every single yes. person. So perfect segue. We aim to inspire people to give more as they get more. So what is one of your all-time favorite moments of giving? Uh, we'll see if you can take off the mask to feel comfortable with bragging for a minute here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, I did a, it was funny. I was, I watched the Tony Robbins I'm not your guru documentary screening actually with Tony in like a, a private screening here in LA, whenever that was a year or two ago. And he did like a full workshop at the end, like a three hour workshop for us. And at one point he said, we're standing up, but he said, close your eyes. And I want you to think about in the last couple of years, the times that were most fulfilling for you. He was talking about the art, uh, the science of success and the, the art of fulfillment. He goes, think about the times that were most fulfilling. And I'm, my eyes are closed and these three moments kept coming up and they were when I was building schools for kids. It's like when the kids were around me, when they had so much energy and the passion, they were so happy. I was like, man, we just made an impact on like 50 kids lives and getting to witness it and experience it. It was so rewarding for me. It was so meaningful and fulfilling to be able to give back in that setting. I think cause I look at myself as like a, you know, a kid who ch was constantly struggling so much in school that to be able to provide that for other kids means a lot to me. It's, it's just really rewarding. So I love that feeling. And um, I feel like that money goes a long way. You know, that 35 grand goes a long way to those kids and it'll last a long time. So I feel like those moments have been the most rewarding for me. Um, but whenever I just help friends in general with anything, I feel good. You know, whenever I make an introduction or, or do something for a friend and just give constantly I feel good in those daily moments and I think it shouldn't we shouldn't be focused on like oh what's the one good thing I'm going to do this year what's the thing I'm going to do every day to give back and we don't need to constantly give money I focus on how can I smile at each person when I walk down the street that's a form of giving you're giving energy you're creating a ripple effect in the world for that person looking at people's eyes is a form of giving that most people don't do so what are those little things and acknowledging friends, hugging people, you know, I'm hugging you guys downstairs. Like what can we give that we're not giving that we're living in scarcity or we're hot or holding back. And I think for maybe the people listening who aren't making a lot of money yet, cause they don't feel like they're ready to give that much financially. You can still give your heart and energy to people and it's going to feel amazing. And those little moments of like just going out of your way and writing someone a card and giving it to them and seeing the response they said of how you changed their life. Like I sent a text message to this kid. I just met this kid. Uh, I was in St. Louis speaking at my old college um, two weeks ago, three weeks ago. And I watched the soccer game because the kid, uh, one of the kids who was doing the video work for me at the uh, mastermind actually, Caden from the, the Grant Cardone speech, he's playing soccer. I said I'd go watch a game at my alma mater. He had a friend who had lost his dad last year. His dad had passed away. And I'd heard about this when I met him and I was just like, you know, I'm sorry to hear about, the, hear about that. I just got a text three days ago that his mom just passed away. And this is a 22 year old senior in college and lost his dad a year ago, just lost his mom. And I heard about it and I, so I sent him a text. I just said, you know, man, I'm thinking about you. Uh, I have no idea what this feels like, but I wanna let you know that you were born for a reason and you have incredible gifts. When I met you, you had an incredible gift. And I know you're, you're supposed to use those gifts to give back and to make an impact on others. So whatever you need, let me know. But you know, don't allow this to hold you back. Feel whatever you need to feel, grieve. It's gonna take time. But just remember you're here for a reason and make sure that you use your gifts to, so this isn't for nothing. And he just texted me back a few times, just like, thank you so much. This means the world to me. You have no idea how much this meant to me. I showed my sisters. They were crying. You know, it's just a little thing. I didn't have to give him money. 
but we can give something to lift people up. And I think those moments I'm, I'm like proud of, like when I step out of my comfort zone and say something or do something or show up for someone. And I just try to do my best. And I think we get to remind ourselves, what are those things every single day where we can give back to our family, our friends, the community? And that's, it doesn't have to be financial, you know? Yeah. It's funny because uh, one, that's a great story. And two, you just use the, the words, step out of your comfort zone yeah. to give somebody something. That's what you've done with this book. Yeah. You've given a gift yeah. to everyone yeah. who's willing to it's very invest uncomfortable. in it, right? Yeah, <laughs> and it, it, clearly it was uncomfortable for, for you to do as I read through it. Um, where's the best place for everyone to find this book and why yeah. should they buy it? Mask of masculinity.com or it's in Barnes and Noble and Amazon or anywhere you want to get it. Audible book is up there as well. Why should you get it? If you're a, a man, you should get it to understand what your masks are just so you're aware first and you can see the prices you're paying and the rewards you get for wearing them. And also it gives you some tools on how to, how to let go of them and start to express yourself in a healthier way for women. It's the keys to the kingdom. It tells you why your father, husband, boyfriend, brother, son has maybe been disconnected from you or others in a certain way. And it's going to give you tools on how to connect with them in a way that doesn't make them wrong, but instead makes them right for who they are being, the good that they do do. And I think a lot of men tell me that when they're, the women in life fixate on the thing that they're doing wrong constantly and they neglect seeing like the, all the other stuff they're doing good all day long. It makes them want to wear the mask more and stay disconnected because they feel misunderstood. So a lot of it is just like the guys just want to be understood, just like the ladies want to be as well. So it's going to help you understand the men in your life and have a deeper, more meaningful relationship. It's funny you mentioned the keys to the kingdom for the women. This is almost like them getting the answers to the it test. Is. You might sell more books to women than you I do to men, so, actually. Man. I like think the so. inside scoop on, on what we're thinking and, yes. and all that stuff. All right, so last question for you. It's a question I ask everybody. Why should people be unapologetic and proud of their pursuit of success and or wealth? I just believe that we're all here and where every action we take is setting an example of what's possible for the people around us. So if we're not proud of our dreams and accomplishing them and the success we want to have, then we're telling other people that it's not okay to do the same. So when we show up fully and we achieve what we want and we're doing good in that pursuit, then we're setting a powerful example of what's possible for everyone around you. And the more you achieve and succeed, the more example you can set. So I think you're doing a disservice to your creator, your parents, God, whoever you want to say brought you into this world. You're doing a disservice by not being fully you in the process of achieving or pursuing your dreams. I love it. It's giving permission to everybody else. And if you don't go first, who's going to? That's it. I absolutely love it. Lewis, thank you, my man. Everyone who's listening, The Mask of Masculinity, go get it now. Maskofmasculinity.com is the best. And by the way, I think I saw in there, there's like some little extras if you buy it on the some website. bonuses, yeah. There's some bonuses if you get one copy or three or ten. You get some different bonuses. You can check them out there. Yeah, yeah. so go get multiple copies because this is a great gift for all the men and even women in your life. Lewis, my man, my friend, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Appreciate this. you. Thanks for listening. And if you loved this episode and know of someone else who is as successful as they are generous, please pass them on to me. It would mean the world to me if you help me get this cause and this message out to as many listeners as I can. So please, if you liked what you heard, it goes a long way if you take 30 seconds and leave me a five-star review and share this with your friends. I'll be forever grateful. And until the next episode, cheers to your success.